Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and today we're going to be talking about some wet weather that is on the way for New South Wales, central Queensland, especially around the Sydney area, where up to 200 millimetres could fall in the next five days. We're also going to be talking about far north Queensland, a tropical low in the Arafura Sea, and some rainfall around the Perth metro area. And to finish the video off, we're going to be looking at a developing typhoon threat in the Philippine Sea that will still impact Australia in one way or another. So all of that, plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you haven't already, then please do consider to subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. We're going to start things off down in New South Wales. We already have some storms starting to line up the New South Wales South Australia border. As expected, the rainfall is starting there and it will intensify throughout the course of today. It's developing it from an upper level trough and as a result, there is some good thunderstorms that are just starting to develop now around the Broken Hill area, which will be impacting Broken Hill in the coming couple of hours. It's just moving through the remote South Australia at this time and it'll move into New South Wales, impacting like I said, communities such as Tibura, Broken Hill and White Cliffs over the coming couple of hours. And if we were to switch this over to the rainfall forecast and have a look, you can see those storms are very much on the rainfall forecast right now, but also some moderate to heavy falls extending into South Australia and as far north as Queensland and the Northern Territory as well. They're going to pick themselves up over the course of today and into early tomorrow morning when they will uh, start to rotate around a common centre of low pressure, which will be in northern New South Wales at this time. And that is very important because as its low pressure system develops and heads closer to the coastline, it will be enhancing rainfall patterns around the uh, Sydney area right down towards the New South Wales Victoria border, where, as I said at the start of the video, a lot of rainfall is definitely on the cards for the remainder of this week and into early next weekend. And as we play this through on Friday, you can see there will be the chance of some severe thunderstorms in central New South Wales, which is kind of unusual this time of the year as we head into winter and conditions do cool down quite significantly through there. But severe thunderstorms, they are an off chance of occurring with some heavy falls possible around the Cobar, Ivanhoe, Hilston sort of area. Um, and then as these storms uh, enter into the evening hours, they will, of course, die off because they'll have a lack of convective energy and evaporation. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the rainfall is going to be easing off. Moderate to heavy rainfall is possible through a lot of central uh, western and central eastern New South Wales, extending south of Lightning Ridge right down towards Griffith Hay and uh, parts of the New South Wales Victoria border communities as well, even as far towards the west as Mildura and as far south as Albury as well. So it's going to be quite a widespread rainfall event impacting communities such as Parks and Dubbo, um, but it shouldn't get itself over the Great Dividing Range until probably about Saturday afternoon. Now there will be consistent light to moderate rainfall extending south of Taree and Coffs Harbour right down towards the New South South Wales Victoria border all throughout Friday afternoon and into Saturday, but that won't pick up until late Saturday night and into early Sunday morning when the rainfall patterns will really start to enhance as this low pressure system moves itself offshore. And throughout the course of Sunday, it has a driving band of rainfall moving ashore around Wollongong, south of Wollongong, especially towards um, uh, Naruma and Batemans Bay. That's where we're going to be seeing the worst of the rainfall and up to 150 millimetres is possible. It looks like the rainfall forecast has been backed down a little bit from yesterday uh, in terms of how intense it's meant to be, but still it does look like a healthy amount of rainfall is expected. There'll be thunderstorms extending all down the New South Wales and Queensland coastline as well, so make sure you are exercising caution if you are in and around the water uh, through there because these dangerous thunderstorms, they do actually have the risk of spinning up, uh, spinning up uh, torn uh, not tornadoes, water spouts and damaging winds because they will be um, associated with a big squall line by the looks of things. So some very heavy rainfall over the ocean is expected if you are there's an off chance that you're going to be fishing in these conditions, it will be quite nasty indeed. Um, also up in towards the Gold Coast and the Brisbane area, there's going to be some strong thunderstorms possible in the area, or maybe strong thunderstorms is the wrong word, but there will be some storms and some heavy showers in the area, uh, probably Sunday afternoon, but nothing crazy there, maybe 10 or 15 millimetres only, and yeah, hopefully easing off by Monday afternoon completely as this low pressure system drags itself further out into the Tasman Sea. Now we've been talking about this for quite a while now, and I've been going over over the last couple of days the fact that the wind forecast is quite good uh, for the uh, for this weather event. It's really not going to be a gusty weather event. The maximum wind speeds that are going to be impacting the coastline will be sitting at around 20 to 30 kilometers an hour, gusting up towards 50 kilometers an hour, but really nothing to write home about whatsoever. We're not expecting damaging winds or destructive surf conditions, but still exercise caution if you are around the water because heavy showers, they can spin up some very damaging winds. They've done it before and they will do it again in an event like this. It's just not so much on the forecast right now, which is good news because we're not expecting a full-blown East Coast low. It's just going to be a rather wet 
uh, weekend for parts of the New South Wales coastline. And you can see that with rainfall accumulations over the coming five days. Around Batemans Bay, which will be the wettest of the locations, or just outside of Batemans Bay, closer to the Captain's Flat, 140 to 150 millimetres, and widespread totals above 100 millimetres, extending from Naruma right up towards Wollongong. And that also includes inland communities such as near Warrangumba Dam. You're expecting 105 millimetres or so there, so there's certainly going to be the risk of that uh, dam approaching capacity or reaching capacity if it isn't already at capacity right now because I last time I read it's in the 99% uh, full uh, sort of range. So this is a, a dangerous situation for the Warragumba Dam as well. There is a good chance of the spill there. So I imagine they'll be releasing water or I definitely hope they'll be releasing water throughout Friday and into Saturday morning before the worst of the rainfall really does come ashore. For Sydney, you're probably expecting about 80 to 90 millimetres of rainfall in some of the suburbs, more like 70 to 80 millimetres. Inland towards Penrith, a solid 100 millimetres expected but yeah it does look quite wet along the New South Wales coastline and once again reciprocated amongst the forecast models the GFS now calling for the most of the rainfall out of all the forecast models a healthy 200 millimetres there and the Access G3 as well calling for a peak accumulations of 200 millimetres but you get the idea a ballpark 150 to 200 millimetres expected will be very heavy rainfall from Saturday um, uh, no Sunday morning right through to Monday morning especially around uh, Batemans Day and Aruma up towards Wollongong. Uh, Sydney does look like it will miss out on the worst of the rainfall, the actual torrential rainfall, but they could, still could pick up a healthy accumulation, that's for sure. Again, we'll have to wait and see on the day where the worst of the rainfall really does um, exist, but it will be somewhere between Naruma right up towards Nara or Wollongong. Um, it could get itself over any one of the communities between that location, but it shouldn't penetrate too far inland by the looks of these forecast models. And again, if we were to take a look at a mix of all three forecast models for rainfall across inland New South Wales and up in towards Queensland as well. This is a fantastic forecast for agricultural communities in inland New South Wales and also ranching communities in much further western New South Wales around Broken Hill. A healthy 40 to 80 millimetres is on the cards for a lot of New South Wales around Griffith, uh, Orange, Dubbo, up towards Tamworth, Moree, Lightning Ridge and even inland around Cobo as well. You're expecting a very healthy at least 30 or 40 millimetres and some locations could get up towards 80 or 90 millimetres of rainfall so fantastic forecast for the farmers and it's not Queensland doesn't even miss out on it either expecting up towards 50 millimetres across a lot of locations through agricultural Queensland as well and even as far inland as Mumbai in South Australia and up towards Birdsville on the South Australia Queensland border uh, expecting up towards 25 millimetres there and it will fall some of this will fall in heavy downpour, uh, downpours but a lot of this is going to be falling in light to moderate accumulations over a 24 hour period so it will gently saturate the ground which is just fantastic news. So I believe farmers are absolutely stoked for this weather event uh, and I'm very excited for them as well because this is a best case scenario for them. There is absolutely no doubt about it and it looks like it's going to be a great start to cropping season 2024 if this rainfall wants to keep itself up and even more rainfall expected next week as we move to the second part of the video which is more Queensland focused. Next Wednesday I believe we're going to be seeing another upper level trough start to develop or maybe next Thursday now and that will be bringing even further rainfall in towards much more remote central Queensland and also into uh, South Australia and even into northern New South Wales as well. But it looks like some thunderstorms might develop Thursday afternoon, Friday and into Saturday, uh, dropping a little bit more rainfall there. But again, because it is eight or nine days out still, the forecast is relatively uncertain. But Again, a further 25 millimetres is possible from that event, and that will lead to accumulations up towards 105 to 110 millimetres or so for some parts of Queensland, right in the Murray-Darling River Basin as well, which is a little bit concerning because the Murray River is already flowing at a minor to moderate flooding alert in this part of um, southern Queensland. Uh, so another 100 millimetres on top of that could cause some pretty gnarly flooding, but again, I think it's going to be okay. I think it will pull through being a healthy rainfall accumulation. Now up towards far north Queensland because we still have that tropical rainfall that is continuing. It is just that consistent 20 millimetres a day for 10 days sort of weather up in northern Queensland around Innisfail and Tully. It's stock standard stuff for this time of the year. I'm not seeing any especially wet days, but I'm also not seeing any especially dry days. You're waking up this morning to a couple of showers here and there inland around Mount Cambrian where Darrell is watching, uh, expecting some uh, light showers as far inland there, but most likely partly cloudy conditions. But around Innisfail and 
and cans, maybe a couple of showers here and there along the coastline, but nothing crazy and nothing really heavy through there. A little bit of rainfall is possible tomorrow afternoon. It could be a little bit heavier than normal uh, in some heavier showers and again in Saturday afternoon, but it looks like Sunday and Monday might pull through as being a little bit drier as well before the rainfall picks up again Tuesday afternoon. Very uh, quite heavy uh, on Wednesday and into Thursday as well. That's where the bulk of the rainfall over the next 10 days will be falling. We could be seeing accumulations up towards 50 or 70 millimetres around Innisfail or Tully before drying off before next next weekend up there. But yeah, in total over the next 10 days, expecting some accumulations to approach that 170, 180 millimetre mark. Not so much is it reciprocated amongst forecast models just because of model resolution. The Axis G3 also very much on board with what the Eastern Bev has to say. They are neck and neck in terms of rainfall accumulations through there. We won't forget about the Daintree as well, maybe up towards 100 millimetres or 120 millimetres possible there in some spots around the Daintree. So we will uh, be monitoring this quite closely because there is some good rainfall on the cards there. And also some good rainfall across central Queensland around Mackay, Early Beach, up towards uh, the Whit Sundays as well, maybe 25 to 50 millimetres over the next 10 days too, but nothing crazy. And we'll break that down as it happens uh, on the days that it is forecast. But it looks like the majority of it will be happening today or tomorrow. Now, over the next 10 days, you can still see this big enhanced pool of moisture up around Indonesia and New Guinea, especially for this time of the year. And that is from a developing tropical low that's going to be happening probably in the next couple of days or so. But again, it's really been dropped from the forecast and it's not worth our time talking about it this time. Uh, the GFS did at one point have a full-blown tropical cyclone developing, uh, probably I think it was around uh, the Tuesday and Wednesday part. But yeah, that's not on the cards anymore. Um, but still, some enhanced moisture possible in the hour if you're seeing north of Australia, but this will definitely be the last time that I talk about this because it isn't expected to be anything crazy indeed. And now all of the significant rainfall, the 100 millimetres plus that was on the forecast for Arnhem Land has been completely dropped and there's only a couple of showers here and there expected uh, between, I believe, days 5 and 10. Yeah, mostly days 5 and 10. But there could be a little bit of rainfall in the next three days up there. Of course, this time of the year, we are only just entering May now and that is just the end of the wet season. There is still the chance of of some evening thunderstorms popping up in the Northern Territory, but uh, they really start to ease off now and it doesn't look like uh, this uh, round of thunderstorms has anything to do with a developing tropical low or whatever in the Philippine Sea, which is what we'll talk about in just a minute. We're going to start talking about Western Australia because we do still have some good rainfall on the forecast for this Friday and into this weekend. We could be seeing some heavy falls happen around the Perth area, which is just fantastic news because we are in desperate need of some rainfall, that's for sure. Um, but it looks like we're going to see a nice line of thunderstorms pop up just offshore from the coastline and then just onshore in the Perth coastal plain Friday afternoon into evening ahead of a cold front that's going to brush the coast uh, by Saturday before cooling things down because it was quite a warm day yesterday. I was walking around in the evening and it was a beautiful night, that's for sure. And it looks like there's going to be some warmer than average conditions as well throughout the course of next week as, as, as a result of some thunderstorms extending down from a west coast trough. Uh, and that could result in some more rainfall next week and next Friday. Friday and Saturday, uh, but again, it will be thunderstorm focused. So this is quite an unusual pattern for this time of the year. Uh, normally this is more sort of February, March or April weather, definitely not in towards mid-May, which is where we're gonna be looking at right now. But some healthy rainfall accumulations are possible. In fact, take a look at this down towards Margaret River, up towards 160 or 170 millimeters possible just offshore. That's definitely a model anomaly right there. It's a model struggling to uh, cope with what rainfall is actually on the forecast, but still widespread 15 to 30 millimeters is possible and unfortunately this rainfall won't penetrate as far inland as what you'd like and it looks like the wheat belt and some of the more agricultural communities in inland western australia do completely miss out but take a look at this up around exmouth and so forth it's not reciprocated amongst forecast models but the axis g3 calling for a hell of a lot of rainfall between days five and ten around here uh, whether this is a one-hit wonder and it's not uh, being kicked from the forecast by tomorrow i'm not 100 percent sure but again we'll just wait and see take it by um the day and if this is on the forecast tomorrow then we're going to need to give it a little bit more love and a little bit more attention 
Now, time to take a look up in the Philippine Sea because we've been talking about this for quite a few days now. The GFS still very much on board with a strong tropical uh, cyclone or typhoon as they're known in the Philippine Sea developing late next week and into early next week. And this is going to be an interesting system to track. Normally, the first typhoon of the Western Pacific season, if it gets itself in the Philippine Sea, it can go absolutely nuts. The sea surface temperatures are around 29 or 30 degrees Celsius right now. That's enough to sustain some of the strongest typhoons that you could imagine. And it looks like it's going to give the Philippines a little bit of a scare as well from Wednesday onwards. But we're going to take it back in time right now. We're going to take a look at current satellite imagery because this is the precursor convection and thunderstorm activity to our system. It's currently located right here, the center of the circulation, just towards the north of the equator. It'll be moving further north over the coming couple of hours um, and it will be blowing up some more convection as well throughout the course of today. But looking really unhealthy at this time. But if you were to take a look at the wind forecast right now, in just two days, we're gonna, already going to start to see a full-blown tropical earth start to develop south of Yap and Palau. Uh, this is going to be moving through the Philippine Sea really slowly uh, through Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday next week before hopefully developing Wednesday or so. Well, not hopefully developing, but most likely developing Wednesday afternoon or evening. Uh, it'll likely be about 40% stronger than what the GFS forecast model is suggesting in these runs. And it is currently the only forecast model to really be uh, promoting this system to the degree that it is the Eastman Reef really not calling for much at this time, and neither is the Axis G3, but the Axis G3 is generally very unreliable in the Philippine Sea, and the Eastman Reef model generally is pretty unreliable in the early seasons. Uh, the Icon model as well, just for funsies, isn't calling for anything either. Uh, but yeah, the GFS model is by far the most accurate for typhoon activity out of all of the major forecast models. It very rarely gets stuff wrong uh, in the seven-day forecast period in the Philippine Sea. It can throw up some wacky things 10 days out in advance, but it isn't doing that now and as I've said time and time again consistency is key so this is a likely uh, system at this time I'm going to say maybe a 40 or 50 percent chance of development sometime next week and it looks like it has every intention to rapidly intensify as well getting getting itself in the heart of the Philippine Sea and rapidly intensifying throughout the course of late next week and into early next weekend finishing off with peak winds probably at around 170 kilometers an hour that's gusting to a hundred knots so very very strong indeed by the looks of things especially for an early season typhoon. Uh, this track quite concerningly absolutely screams Typhoon Suruge for those in the Philippines that remember that in 2021. I do remember tracking that one as well. Uh, that was a crazy system. That got up to, uh, to wind speeds of 195 miles per hour. That's uh, 170 knots, I believe, or 200 and I'm going to quick math it here, 295 kilometers an hour or so. Uh, very, very strong, ridiculously strong uh, typhoon. And for those of you playing in Australia, that would be an all-time record for our strength in terms of the Australian base and by a wide margin as well. So it just goes to show that the Philippine Sea can throw up some monster typhoons at any time of the year and they are crazy in terms of comparison to Australian tropical cyclones. So we're going to have to be watching this one quite closely because if it does go for the Philippines at Category 4 or 5 intensity, it's going to cause a lot of pain through there. There'll be updates on the Cyclones Extra channel as well as this draws closer to the day. We're also going to be talking about an Eastern Pacific hurricane on the that channel as well sometime maybe today or tomorrow depending on when I can get around to it I've got a bit of a busy schedule going on right now um We'll also be taking a look at this system more in depth as it comes closer to the day. Um, but yeah, that basically does it in terms of forecasting for the Australian region. This will also enhance southeasterly winds. I did forget to mention that across the Northern Territory in Queensland, elevating the fire danger, which I did talk about yesterday, which uh, nothing has really changed from yesterday, but it does still look like high to very high fire dangers across a lot of the Northern Territory uh, next week as this tropical, oh, as this typhoon develops from those southeasterly winds. So again, we'll have to wait and see on this front here because it looks like there could be the chance of some pretty good bushfire conditions happening across the Northern Territory and Western Australia. But we're really pushing this video out now for time. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Your support really does mean a lot. And if you like this video, then please do leave a like and tell me how I can improve in the comment section down below. Give me a detailed weather report for your location as well in the comment section down below. Your support greatly, uh, definitely does mean a lot. And a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now. Uh, thank you guys every day for your support. But yeah, that is all for me on this weather update. Any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section uh, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.